Hi, so this is the first in a series of videos about immunohistochemistry, and we're going to start with a marker called Napsin A. I'm going to teach you seven important, essential, must-know facts about Napsin. The first is what it stands for. So Napsin A stands for a novel, that's where the N comes from, aspartic proteinase of the pepsin family, that's where the sin comes from. So novel aspartic proteinase of the pepsin family, and as you can tell, it's an enzyme. Second important fact, Napsin A stains 80% of lung adenocarcinomas, and the staining is granular and cytoplasmic. Now 80% is more or less what TTF1 stains, so the sensitivity is roughly equivalent. Now different papers have different numbers, and so this 80% is more or less an average of all the papers that have looked at Napsin A staining in adenocarcinomas of the lung. So remember, 80%. Here's an example of Napsin um, A staining in an adenocarcinoma of the lung, and let me get my laser pointer out. So this one up here is TTF1 on the top left, and it shows nuclear staining, as you'd expect in a lung adenocarcinoma. Um, at left bottom is a P63, which is usually negative in adenocarcinomas of the lung. CK56, another so-called squamous marker, is also usually negative in lung adenocarcinomas. And then the top right shows you napsin staining in, a, in this adenocarcinoma, and the napsin, as you can see, is beautifully cytoplasmic and granular. And you can see, I'll put the laser pointer here, that the nuclei are completely negative. So that's what you expect to see in a good napsin stain. And it's a very good marker of adenocarcinomas of the lung. Now remember, because 80% are positive, that also means 20% are negative. So neither napsin negativity nor TTF negativity excludes adenocarcinoma of the lung. That's an essential fact to know about these markers. Third uh, must know fact, Napsin A is negative in squamous cell carcinoma. And virtually every good study from any good center has shown that Napsin A stains 0% of squamous cell carcinoma. So it's very good to differentiate adenocarcinomas of the lung from squamous cell carcinomas of the lung. Here's an example of a squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. So the bottom uh, panel shows you the squamous markers being positive in the tumor. Here is P63, nuclear marker. CK56 cytoplasmic marker and as you would expect TTF1 is negative and then if you move up to napsin A you can see the napsin A stain is also negative in squamous cell carcinomas and that's a very useful thing to have. Fourth important fact napsin A is positive in normal alveolar pneumocytes and alveolar macrophages. In other words napsin A is not a marker of malignancy it's just a marker of lung epithelium. And for some reason, which is not very clear to me, napsin A tends to spill over into the alveolar macrophages. Um, and that's one thing that TTF1 doesn't do. So TTF1 is positive in normal alveolar pneumocytes in a nuclear fashion, but it does not stain alveolar macrophages. So that makes napsin A slightly more dirty stain than TTF1. Here's an example. So in this picture, this is an alveolar pneumocyte, cytoplasmic granular napsin staining. Here's a normal alveolar pneumocyte. Here's another one. Here's a very flat type 1 pneumocyte. And then here are alveolar macrophages, and they're taking up the stain too. So it is, you do need to be cognizant of this and be careful while interpreting immuno, Napsin A immunohistochemistry. Fifth important fact, Napsin A can be positive not just in lung adenocarcinomas, but in adenocarcinomas of other kinds. And so in renal cell carcinoma, in papillary thyroid carcinoma and in clear cell carcinomas of the endometrium and ovary. To show you some examples, so here is a clear cell carcinoma of the kidney. You can see these beautiful clear cells up here. Clear cell carcinoma of the kidney, RCC. Here's Napsin A, beautiful cytoplasmic uh, granular positivity. It's not diffusely positive, but it is positive. And here is TTF1 completely negative. So uh, watch out for that. Uh, and be cognizant of the fact that napsin A doesn't just stain lung. Here's a very, very big pitfall for napsin that very few people know, but I do ask my residents this. This is a papillary thyroid carcinoma metastatic to the uh, lymph node, as you can see up there. 
and then you can see the internuclear inclusions and the grooves and the nuclear irregularities, the whole, everything that you expect to see in papillary thyroid carcinoma. But look at this. It's positive for napsin A in a cytoplasmic and granular fashion. Of course, it's also positive for TTF1. TTF, of course, stands for thyroid transcription factor and is positive in um, most well-differentiated thyroid carcinomas. But very few people know that TTF and napsin co-expression can occur in thyroid cancer. So the thing we think is very characteristic of lung cancer, um, that is to express both TTF1 and napsin, is not specific. So it can also happen in uh, papillary thyroid cancers. Here is a paper, I think this was American Journal of Surge Path, showing napsin A positive in 43 or 49 clear cell carcinomas of the endometrium. So very, very high percentage of clear cell carcinomas of the endometrium are napsin A positive. And here's a paper, American Journal of Clinical Pathology, showing napsin A positivity in 36 of 36 clear cell carcinomas of the ovary. So it really is, um, seems to be a very good marker of clear cell carcinomas of the GYN, of the gynecologic tract. Our sixth must know fact is that monoclonal napsin is better, is more specific than polyclonal napsin. Again, monoclonal, better than polyclonal. Why? Because the latter, which is polyclonal napsin, can stain adenocarcinomas of the GI tract. Now that really is a, is a bad thing to happen for a stain that is putatively a marker of uh, lung adenocarcinoma. We reported this um, in our paper, I think this was from 2012, where we looked at monoclonal napsin versus polyclonal napsin and both markers versus TTF1 for determining lung origin in METS. So we only looked at metastatic cancers in metastatic sites. And there we found several things, but I want you to focus on the things in red. So in colonic cancer, so metastases from colon cancer to various sites, we found that monoclonal napsin never stained it. So it was great, very specific, and TTF1 also never stained it. But if you use polyclonal napsin, five of the 16, that's 31% were positive, very bad. Esophagus, none of them stained with monoclonal napsin, but five of six of them stained 83% with polyclonal napsin, bad. None of them stayed with TTF. And stomach, also monoclonal napsin and TTF were specific, but polyclonal napsin was not. It, it did stain stomach cancers too. And, and here's an example of a colonic cancer metastatic uh, in, in that study. So here's a colon cancer. Here's monoclonal napsin, completely negative. Polyclonal napsin shows you this peculiar supranuclear cytoplasmic localization. It is a granular cytoplasmic stain, so can be confusing if you use polyclonal napsin. In other words, please do not use polyclonal napsin if you are using it as your uh, napsin stain. Here's an esophageal adenocarcinoma, metastatic to a regional lymph node, monoclonal napsin negative, polyclonal napsin positive in the same um, uh, supranuclear cytoplasmic pattern that I mentioned before. Now, others subsequently confirmed these observations. This is a uh, letter to the editor by Natasha Reckman and her colleague. Um, and uh, you can see that they are showing similar patterns of polyclonal napsin A positivity in mucinous adenocarcinomas versus negative staining for monoclonal napsin. Again, so appendix positive versus monoclonal negative, polyclonal um, positive in colon versus negative with monoclonal and pancreas showing uh, positivity with polyclonal but negative with monoclonal. And then they concluded in that paper, so her um, colleague was, I think, Sophia Kazi. They um, concluded in that paper, they said, we found that in most cases, nonspecific labeling with polyclonal napsin A in mucinous adenocarcinomas had a peculiar supranuclear localization, same as we had uh, illustrated in, uh, in our study. So this really seems to be a phenomenon. The bottom line is don't use polyclonal napsin if you can, um, if you can uh, use monoclonal instead. And finally, our last fact is that napsin A positivity in entrapped pneumocytes, we know that pneumocytes can be positive, is a pitfall. And why it's a pitfall, I'll show you here. So the background tumor here is actually squamous cell carcinoma. These cells that are uh, negative for napsin A are squamous cell carcinoma cells. And, and you can tell that the tumor is actually negative. 
But you say, well, some of it is positive. Isn't it focally positive for napsine? Well, that's not tumor. So those are entrapped pneumocytes. Here's entrapped pneumocytes. So all the, the arrows show you entrapped pneumocytes. And then the arrowheads show you macrophages, alveolar macrophages that are taking up napsin. So if you realize morphologically that these are not tumor cells, these are entrapped pneumocytes and macrophages, you will be saved and you won't misinterpret this as positive napsin staining. On the other hand, if you don't realize that, you might call this focal napsin positivity and you might end up misinterpreting this tumor as an adenocarcinoma instead of squamous. So be aware of that pitfall and I hope you like these seven essential points. Thank you for listening.